curious because like I had a really blunt conversation with someone yesterday about this and I don't think he took it the right way, but he's in a position where he's he's doing it as like a side hustle, doing basketball training as a side hustle. He's he wants to do it full time. And one of his biggest issues that he told me he's having, he said that he's not getting referrals. And I'm curious, like I said something very specific to him, but I'm curious to to know what you think about someone who is in this business that's not getting any referrals. What do you think the real problem is? Results. And that's in fast results, because I can't stress this enough. The faster you get results and to where it translate and and what I've been doing, even since I've met you, Ben, I've been kind of sending you clips mm -hmm. leading up to this so you can kind of see factually what I'm talking about. Right. I've been I've added you to my weekly list that goes out to my parents. I just uh, signed up uh, a young lady. Uh, about probably about a month ago. And she started out with me doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've since have moved her into group training along with one-on-one. -on -one. She's fifth, yeah, fifth grade, just, just started sixth grade. And so after her first, I would say two sessions with me, her dad was already seeing results and, and, um, and I also went to see one of her games in the in a, in, a, in a league game, and we were able to see how she was already applying the things that I worked with her on in her in a game situation right away. Um, and so one of her teammates' mom recognized her improvement and her shooting, and 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 uh pointed it out to the dad and so the dad said yeah well, you know we got this new skills coach we've been you know we've only been working with him a couple of weeks now but we've gotten results mm -hmm. already well that mom a week later asked me could she bring her daughter in for an evaluation to see if her daughter could train with me came her daughter came in did the evaluation now her daughter signed up with me right because so, of the you results. see what i'm saying yeah yeah and that's happened thousands of times for you it's like kids train that, get results everybody can see it in the games parents talk about it they wonder how did that girl get so good within this short period of time and then they all get pointed to you and then you just rinse and repeat with everybody and, and but the other thing ben i think that's important to point out is that i do this with teams also meaning mm -hmm. that for many years um players who trained with me like individually they would be on like a youth team and the coach would just say hey we're seeing outstanding results with these others let's just send our whole team to him let him do skills training for our whole team and so i had a team years ago i can call it united ballers of dallas and and uh uh, that team went on to win the AAU national championship in fourth grade and in fifth grade. Wow. Um, and those players stayed with me for years. Mm -hmm. I had a high school team that was Lake Highlands High School. They were averaging five wins a season. The new coach came in uh, and took over the team <clears throat> and the best player on that team was a freshman. And she had been in my training program since she was in the fifth grade. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's it. Since she was in the fifth grade. And she was the best player on the team. And so she had mentioned to her coach about how she had been training with me for five years. <clears throat> and the coach 
came to me and said, is there any way <coughs> What's wrong? Any way that I can get my whole team with you? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so long story short, we get the whole team. <coughs> and those girls go from winning five games a year to when they became seniors, they won a district championship. Wow. They was working with me year round. And then from that, I started to get other teams as a result of that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse right. Me. And I'll even poke this a little bit further. So let's say someone's watching this. They're doing it as a side hustle, or maybe they're just starting. The, the clients that they have aren't referring anyone into them, meaning they're not getting fast results or, or results at all. What do you think that coach needs to change about themselves in order to start getting results so people start talking about the business? And, and I ask because I remember very early on when I started my soccer training business, like it was almost like a like a light switch. There there was this like it all happened where like I finally realized, okay, I can train these kids all day long, but they have to be improving. They have to like it. The parents the parents need to have this sense of like, wow, this is a really good investment. Like all, all those things have to click in mm -hmm. order for the results to happen. But, um, and I saw how, how that impacted me personally. And, and I, I know most coaches out there, they just straight up struggle to stay in this business for more than two or three years. And it's not a real career. It's like this, it's this vision that they have. And then like they're either not getting results or they don't know how to market and sell. And so the business just goes away. So what, what do you say to someone who's not getting results? What, what do they need to change? <clears throat> First, I think what was important for me is that I, because I knew that I wanted to be in basketball for a career I mm -hmm. didn't know early on whether it was college coaching or, or that type of thing. So mm -hmm. I studied and learned from the best coaches in the world. You know, like um, Bobby Knight, coaches like that. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, Roger Thompson, who was with Bobby Knight at Army, he was my coach my first year in Europe. And uh, he gave me a lot of Bobby Knight stuff, books on clinics and camps and drills and all of that type of stuff. Um, um, so uh, Rick Patino, when I was at Navarra College, uh, we had to learn his system in terms of the way he did skills training to develop um, his players, you know, for example, the reason why a lot of his players were getting drafted after like two years is because they were so versatile. Mm -hmm. And so I got a chance to learn the drills, the ball handling drills that he did with his players every day. And he did it with the centers, the guards and the forwards. Everybody did it. So therefore, that's why you saw a lot of players from Kentucky who was like six, eight, six, nine, six, seven. They could handle the ball. They could do it all. Mm -hmm. And because he made them do all the drills that the guards do. Mm -hmm. okay, I say that to say this. I use those same drills in my training. Mm -hmm. When I spoke with the coaches, the coaches from coaching staff from George Washington University, when they called me the other day after, uh, after one of our kids, after CC committed to them, they told me the reason why we offered her is because of her versatility. They say she can play multiple positions. You know, she can handle the ball. She can shoot it. She can, she can, she can play probably the one through four position. 
And that's because of the way that she's been developed. Mm -hmm. So I do versatility training with all of my students. Uh, I have a, a, a rising, she's seventh grade, seventh grade now. Uh, but since she was, she's been with me since she's in, was in the first grade, she's now ESPN ranked as one of the top seventh graders in the country. Um, and Amazing. yeah, and so, and I'm, and I'm already doing, matter of fact, I had her training with CC <laughs> um, uh, Monday and she'll be training with CC tomorrow as well with the small group that I have with CC. Right. Uh, but I would say that not, I would say in, in terms of, I don't know if it's so much that they need to change. I think they need to be open and willing to learn the types of drills that get the type of results, get, get results quickly. But one thing, here's what I tell my parents when they're looking to get their kids training to potentially get them a scholarship. This is what I say to them. I say the money is in the skill set, meaning that they have to develop a certain type of skill set that is marketable to college coaches. You know, and in order to develop those types of skill sets, they have to be willing to do a lot of repetition work a lot of repetition work uh, in order to develop those skills. I tell my students, you have to do something 10,000 times for it to become a habit as it relates to basketball, mm -hmm. you know? So I would say to, to that coach is that if they're not getting quick results, they need to look at specifically what type of drills that they're doing based on the ages of the kids that they're working with and what those goals are for those kids. For example, I have a program called Next Gen, okay? And just for like first grade to third grade kids, okay? I have a curriculum specifically designed for them where they come, they improve, they have fun. It's a great, great atmosphere. And then, and then we go to the next grade level, like third through six, and then mm -hmm. you know, seventh grade mm -hmm. through twelfth grade. So I have a different curriculum for the different ages that's appropriate, but it's also based on what their goals are. Because when doing my evaluation, I ask all my students, what are their goals? What are they trying to accomplish in basketball? You know, mm -hmm. what's your short-term goal? And some say, Well, I want to make the seventh grade team this year. That's their short-term goal. So we'll put in get we'll put in place a plan to get them ready for seventh grade tryouts. Right. You know, that type of thing. And, you know, we have an excellent record of our teams, of our players. And that's a big, that's a huge thing, Ben. Because right now we're, we're in what we call preseason training for my program. And a lot of the kids that are in that program that are seventh grade, uh, they're going to have tryouts coming up in, say, like October. OK, so mm -hmm. I'm preparing them now for those tryouts. Mm -hmm. You see, because that's that's their goal. That's what they want to be prepared for. But but that's the main thing that if coaches are not getting results, they need to look at specifically what type of drills that they're using with the kids that they're working with at the different ages. And if those drills are not getting quick results, then they need to be open to learning the type of drills that do get results. Right. 